Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be a behind the scenes look at what goes into the production of some of the uh, recent uploads that I've actually done. So the main application that I actually use for editing my videos is LumaFusion. Um, I have uploaded a couple of videos directly through the YouTube app without doing any editing, but that was generally towards the start. Uh, of the videos that I actually posted and that was more so to actually test to make sure that the videos would actually upload in 4k um, rather than 1080p uh, the YouTube application in the past uh, I believe used to be restricted to 1080p uploads and you had to actually use a computer to upload the way I've been doing mine everything has been done on my phone so I've used the camera app and Filmic Pro to actually shoot the footage and then I've gone into LumaFusion and actually editing there. This is LumaFusion and this is the layout that I generally use it on. So because I'm doing it on my iPhone um, I'm using it in landscape um, just to try and give me as much uh, real estate as possible. Um, these are some of the projects that I've uploaded recently. Um, I've kept them about just to just to give you an indication in terms of the different types of editing that I've actually done on various videos and what I'll do is I'll just quickly go through some of them um, and just show you what what you can do um, what you can achieve so this is the actual main page so if you want to actually edit a video you, you basically just click into it so what we'll do is we'll start with this this one that I've not sure if it gives you a date on here. Yeah, so it was 24th of April when I actually started this one. Um, and this one was basically a comparison between the iPhone stock camera and Filmic Pro. So essentially what I've done is there's a little bit of an intro there. And then I've got I've got the main video, which is here and then I've got obviously the text layer on top of it now the good thing about uh, LumaFusion or LumaTouch as it's sometimes referred to as in the App Store as well is that you can actually have uh, I believe it's six video layers as well as up to like 12 audio layers as well so as you'll see down here at this point I've actually got two video layers and two uh, text layers or um, essentially they all come under the same thing but it's four layers that I'm actually using here to actually produce the video that I want to produce but essentially what this does is it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of um, making your videos look slightly differently so obviously this this is your generic kind of um, just standard video pasted into the timeline maybe with a bit of text on top of it that's floating um, and then further down is when I actually get to the side-by-side -side comparison um, with this particular video I wanted to actually put them both in full screen first just to give you an indication and then obviously get to the side-by-side -side. depending on the screen size um, people are going to be using um, the side-by-side -side might be completely useless if you're using it on a phone because you're just not going to be able to see any, any type of detail in there if you're on a TV however obviously this side-by-side -side, um, is more uh, useful because you can actually if you've got a big screen then you will actually be able to have a look and s see the differences between them now with these both of these clips what what I actually tried to do and with most of these kind of comparison clips I try and film them to the same sort of uh, duration so if we just go back to start so what I'm doing is essentially I'm, I'm clicking whatever the video is um, and then what you can do is you can zoom in and then what what you're looking for is the bottom one this little layer here is your your audio track that's overlaid on top of the video um, what you can actually do is click this click this button here and it'll actually separate the audio tracks and then you can use that to try and sync uh, sync everything back up again um, with this obviously because I'm using it on my on my phone the, the screen ain't that big so ideally somewhere down the line I want to actually get the iPad Pro um, I'm waiting for I will I would have actually bought the recent one that came out but I'm not really that impressed in terms of the differences between the previous one and this current one the lidar sensor I'm not really going to make a massive use of at the moment anyway um, with anything that I have planned so essentially I'm just looking for a bigger screen and really I want the iPad that comes with the the faster chip 
at the moment I will make do with uh, using my phone um, once they release one with either an A13X or an A14X depending on when they actually release the next iPad Pro um, that's probably when I'll upgrade but for now because I'm using the phone screen um, it does the job it's more than fast enough and it's more than capable of as you can see scrolling through here it's rendering everything perfectly fine if I hit play and just expand this there's no stutters or anything like that so in terms of optimization this this application is really good for that so this is a fairly simple one in terms of it's literally just two side by sides and what I've actually done is if I just double click into here what you can do is say for example when you're doing these kind of um, videos where if you're going to be doing these comparisons quite often you can actually save presets here so some of these as you'll see is um, so for example if I hit video right it'll move it over there if I hit video left it'll move it back over there so depending on the size the, the um, the actual positioning and everything even you've got blending options and obviously you've you've got a lot of other options in there um, I may do a Luma tutorial video of me actually producing a video start to finish somewhere down the line but at the moment obviously there are quite a few tutorials out there um, maybe not in the way that I actually work but there's there's some very good ones out there that will can actually teach you from start to finish in terms of how to do this kind of thing so in order to go back to the main uh, selection screen you basically hit this on the bottom left hand corner so that was the first one the next one let's have a look at this one so this one is relatively simple this one is the first one where I believe I've done a, a little overlay of a green screen so the green screen is literally just some imported media so and what you do is you double click into the actual file and you've got all your normal positioning and size sizing tools there but if you click onto this one color and effects um, what I'll do is I'll just get rid of this and I'll do it again from scratch so essentially what you've got is you go to the little keyhole and then you've got the green screen option now a little tip that I actually uh, found was if you get rid of that all the way and a lot of the times with these um, downloaded uh, subscribe button things like that the green isn't quite right so if you get the picker tool and select that one and you click it on the actual one a lot of the times you can get it so then it's, it looks a bit so, better you've not got as much of the this is the the shadowing around the edges of whatever the so um, the, the the actual input is the item that you you're you're overlaying so this one obviously it had the little green screen um, subscribe button over the top it's coming across further so at this point I believe I actually messed up in the video when I originally filmed it um, and what I did was uh, I recorded a little voiceover over the top of it and basically when, when you're doing the voiceover you literally just hit start and what it'll do is from whichever point you you want to start recording it'll give you a little timer and it'll kind of phase in and then so you can hear what you were saying previously and then you can continue that once you actually get to this stage so that's another function of this that the voiceovers are very simple um, this one's also got a little uh, f looks like a little video um, because it was shot in on on the iPhone obviously it's going to be in portrait mode and I didn't really want to take up the whole screen so I literally just overlaid it onto the left hand side once again that's that's a pretty simple thing uh, and this one's also got a little voiceover in that tiny little section there as well so it gives you the ability to obviously shoot in one take so most of this video would have been shot in either a single take or multiple takes but back to back um, if you do make any mistakes obviously it, it gives you the option to actually just come um, come in and make make a few amendments if you miss something or if you if you've um, forgotten to actually put some put something in you can you can literally just add in um, some of these clips and just do a little voice over the top so that was that one coming on to the next one this one's going to be a pretty simple one I believe um, if I just come down to here I think the only thing that I actually did on this was I literally just added in a little bit of uh, a soundtrack to the background yeah so that's that's literally just a soundtrack to the background this one if I come right back to start once again it's got a little 
subscribe button over the top so relatively simple uh, OLED burning test this is going to be very simple I mean this is literally just the only difference with this one was the fact that it was one of the first ones where I actually started using the transitions generally when I'm doing uh, videos on LumaFusion I don't, I don't actually use transitions that much um, because it, it almost looks too um, iMovie-esque in terms of the uh, old old style iMovie effects that you used to get where every single scene as soon as you paste it in would automatically have a, a cross dissolve on it but obviously for this what what it was actually doing in terms of the color test um, it does help just to try and break it up and rather than just that that sharp switch between one color to another so for this particular one uh, I found it um, to be useful so I did paste it in this one the Travis Scott Fortnite one, um, same same thing again. This has got a little bit of a different type of um, main uh, intro, and this is just a reverse uh, green screen key. So with this, um, in order to do this, what you do is you you paste in whatever text you've got. So that's that's the text layer. You then paste a shape layer over the top of it and do it whatever color you want the. A background to be so in this case it's black because I wanted a black background with the Fortnite layer what you're then doing is if I come across to color effects your reverse your reverse keying um, in order to rather than having the, the green text showing you're showing everything but the green text and because this layer is on top of this layer um, it's basically cutting out whatever text there was and it's showing you the layer behind and what I did with this particular clip was I just zoomed in a little um, if I remember correctly yeah so I just repositioned the actual file and zoomed in a little just so then the text will actually have something colorful behind it that just helps it to actually show show through nicely um, a little subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner and that's about it for this this particular one right coming on to the next one this one once again is relatively simple it's got a few just a few cuts a few little edits but for the most part relatively simple we've got subscribe one at the end and it's got a little subscribe uh, overlay on the video as well so that one's relatively simple LG OLED settings this one it, it was more so just the number of cuts that I made I made this in several different sections so um, with this it was more a case of the editing um, was literally just splicing in and out the the sections that I, f I found relevant right the next one is the Amazon unboxing and this one I actually filmed using filmic pro um, and on this particular video I also did a I airplayed it to the TV um, I was hoping to try and use it as a almost like a viewfinder um, because of the way I've got the iPhone set up on the tripod sometimes it's quite awkward in terms of looking at the screen and then seeing what you're actually doing trying to keep everything in frame so I was, I was kind of hoping this would be a little hack for me whereby I could actually use the TV as a uh, almost as a display and use it as a, a, a giant viewfinder if, if you if you like um, yeah this one's got a few simple little overlays pictures and a little uh, subscribe uh, edit at the t at the end and one at the start as well so re relatively simple in terms of what I have been doing this one similar thing uh, another Amazon item and relatively simple this one's got a little subscribe overlay bottom right hand corner there and then another one uh, a little image over the over the top just a second layer once again very simple thing to do um, IPTV one this one I think would have been more so just about adding in a few edits uh, that I believe is just covering up some uh, the actual login 
information and go back to start and once again this is just another su uh, subscribe overlay coming on to this one I think this one had more edits in it just by the fact that it had so many different um, video clips that I actually inserted and with this particular one if I remember correctly I actually shot this these particular scenes so if we come across to these so that is around 58 seconds and that one is as well so this one it would have been a similar thing where I'm trying to just sync up by the audio track and just um, I probably would have cut off maybe a few seconds at the start some at the end just to try and get these to a similar lens on this particular one I don't think I actually did a side-by-side uh, -side one um, that, that's something that we'll come to in some of the videos a little later on um, a few edits just here and that's more so I, th I think just by the fact of the conclusion that was given at the end and just just to get rid of some of the the gaps and the pauses um, that I tend to to have when I'm actually filming these just because I want a single cut and it's easier to edit rather than importing loads of smaller files so coming on to the next one this one I believe had quite a few overlays no real um, voiceovers on this one I think this this was literally just shot in terms of um, screen recording on the iPad and I did most of it um, literally just talking um, I made a few mistakes in there um, as was mentioned in the comments with regards to HGIG which I hold my hands up I got that completely wrong um, but for the most part this is relatively simple simple edit these kind of videos you can literally just import them um, with this particular one the only reason I did actually import this and do all these kind of edits was the fact that I wanted it exported in a format where it would play back normal uh, with the, the problem with doing sc screen recordings on the iPad is that when you actually play it back it's going to play in a different form uh, resolution size so it'll, it'll look different on every every device if you play it back on a, on an iPad then it'll actually be full screen from what I've seen but on everything else it'll have uh, um, letterbox bars on the the sides and and all sorts so I literally just want to import this and then export it back out into 16 by 9 which is for the most part what, I'm, what I've been doing with this particular video what I may actually do is export it at um, at a different aspect ratio uh, one that is I'll probably do something like 239 or, or some, something that suits the um, just go back to that suits the mobile phones with the, the taller aspect ratio is a bit better so that was that one uh, next one is this was with regards to the torrent files now this one actually had quite quite a lot of um, intricate kind of editing um, that was very time consuming um, if we come to here so if you're I having to do this so this we then next. click on the actual link itself so click the share over, icon over this, and the one that we out, want um, is my contacts that come up this one here the so the copy sheet. to ds and get if i just go back into this it's it's a lot more complicated than it actually looks so all of these kind of key keyframes essentially um the way you're doing it is you're literally just going forward one one frame at a time so this is 453 to 501 so it's only like a sec seven second clip but in that you've got in just this section so in 27 milliseconds you've got all of these keyframes so, and the problem with obviously using such a small device is it's hard to actually get it accurate on the iPad with the Apple Pencil you, you can probably be a lot more accurate with this I did have to go back a few times just to make sure um, that the keyframe is exactly where I want it to and all this is doing is obviously whatever this is just a um, if I come back it's just a shape layer and what it's doing is it's telling the shape you want to be this size for this frame and you want to mo keep moving and um, just position it wherever it needs to be same thing again I think there's another one here so 
it literally just pops up a little box very simple with that one and then same thing here so it starts in the middle of the screen there p and then it goes up follows it and then comes back down so time consuming not overly complicated but it was more more so just time consuming because of the fact that your viewfinder is so small just the, um, the problem one of the issues is obviously when you go into edit these um, you can't expand this screen any further um, when you're doing your key keyframes you're still restricted by um, that this this box essentially that's that's what you've got to actually look at um, and as you can see from here the amount of keyframes that you have to add it's not overly complicated but it is um, you do have to be quite patient in terms of literally you're there and you're hitting one frame and had it, adding a keyframe and then you hitting another frame and it's just more more time consuming than anything else so that was that one the this one was relatively simple and um, would have only probably yeah the, literally the only edit is the subscribe button at the start the overlay text of um, MA tech in the bottom right hand corner and then right at the end the uh, subscribe so, uh, subscribe button video at the end so very very simple that one that one was pretty quick to, to produce not right so coming on to this one now on this one is where you'll you'll see where it starts to get a bit more complicated so as you can see just by the fact that how high I was um, it starts relatively simple so a little intro I then cut what I always do is I, I make a little cut at 10 seconds or around 10 seconds and that's when I insert the subscribe button and if I come across so even even here where all I've done is I've dropped a uh, PNG image of the Apple TV and then you've got a text layer for the actual text so this is literally just three layers it's got the video all in one clip no real edits needed for this uh, particular video because of what it was um, same thing again little LG logo dropped over the top with the text and then the video clip and in this particular one I actually ended up uh, filming three clips so it's three back to back and I did that um, full screen um, just so then you can get an idea um, of what it is like and you can get a constant um, they, they weren't very long I think I tried to keep these around a minute each so that's only three minutes from there right to there but then here's where it gets a lot more complicated as you can see by just the amount of layers um, so essentially what I've done is I've taken all three and I've tried to sync them up as best as I can so if, as you can see they're not quite perfect but because of what I was trying to show here so this is this was an audio test and essentially what I've done is when you when you when you have three layers so I've got three main video layers uh, when I click on this it's essentially separating the audio layer I just undo that and what's happening is so I know which one is which so I know this particular one is the top one that's the one on the bottom left and that's the bottom right and as I did this quite uh, sorry well yeah that that's the bottom right and that's the top one and I did it so then it separates um, that's the reason for having the colored lighting difference in the background so then when I get around to this stage I can I can know just by looking at it which one is which so essentially what I did was I dropped a little um, icon for the speaker just so then whoever's watching it knows which um, which video clip is actually playing the audio and then over the top of it I've literally just dropped this this text and this is made up of three layers which is identifying the three uh, three different videos and by dragging that across the whole thing um, it just made it easier I didn't have to keep moving moving the text or anything it stayed con uh, constant over the top of them but if I come down to here so as you can see basically I've started it and 10 second clip or roughly 10 seconds and then I've split it and then what what happens is the audio changes as well as where the little um, speaker icon is so it goes from the top down to the bottom left down to the bottom right back to the top left right and this particular edit same thing with this this wasn't particularly hard to do um, and it wasn't even as time consuming as the key uh, keyframes edit uh, and the key keyframes edit I only had to do that because I was trying to blank out um, personal information that I didn't really want to be share sharing on the internet 
but with this it's more a case of if this was something um, as you'll see in one of the videos coming up um, if I was doing an audio and a video test this would be a lot more complicated because firstly I'd have to sync up all the audio um, as well as obviously getting the picture and then separating the um, the layers in terms of which one should have the icons so it, it can get a lot more complicated and on this particular one while I'm using I'm using one two three four five so I've got one spare uh, text layer on top of this so I can add another one there and at this stage I think that's it yeah so basically six six video layers and I've, I've not even ever used that many audio layers um, but in this scenario obviously if, if it was six uh, actual video clips and remember that you can make these as big or as small as you like so you, you could literally fit six videos all all in here as well so um, if it was six actual video clips that you were doing a comparison on that would be six audio layers but then you've still got another I believe it's around six or six audio layers that you can actually add on top of this as well so it is quite flexible it's not obviously a desktop um, editor by any means I mean there's a lot of stuff in the the actual proper professional um, desktop software that you can get that not only can you do a lot more but you can do it a lot easier as well obviously a lot of the stuff that I'm doing here I'm have I'm having to come up with ways of doing stuff that would be simple as like a, a, a single click on um, a Mac or a PC for example whereas I'm having to spend time and actually create these kind of transitions and cuts and do everything manually but it gets the job done and it makes the video a little better I mean that compared to just pasting this back to back there's a big difference it's a lot more appealing and obviously it's, it's a lot more fun to do as well a lot of this is the fact that I've I do quite enjoy doing all these different um, types of videos and learning different ways of actually making them um, a bit more interesting so that one that one was quite fun to do the next one um, so yeah so this one was more so in terms of this was quite difficult in terms of syncing everything up mainly because of the fact that um, the audio levels weren't matching so if I zoom in quite a bit here as you'll see there's there's no uh, real um, because the, the volume levels were different um, it's very hard to actually sync it without actually playing it back constantly um, on these I tried to get it as close as possible bear in mind that when these were shot as you can see from this clip both of them are 30 seconds and 20 but when they were originally shot um, they wouldn't have started at exactly the same time and the problem comes when it's literally only a few frames out because it's so hard to actually get it um, exact um, with this particular one um, this intro, uh, intro was actually the last thing that I filmed so this I actually if I remember correctly I actually filmed this afterwards um, and then I went on and shot these now the problem with this particular video was it actually got a uh, copyright strike and uh, YouTube ended up blanking out the audio in certain sections otherwise they would have uh, that was one of the options or remove the video so um, I chose to actually um, just remove the audio but when I first filmed this what I tried to do was leave the audio on what I was finding was um, there was so much bass that it was actually sh shaking the camera which was making it difficult so what I ended up doing was this these original shots I filmed with audio and if I just come to around here if you if you just watch the image on the right hand side as the eye appears um, that's when obviously the bass kicks in anyway so coming on to this one and this one yeah so this this the, this whole clip had no audio I filmed these with 
um, in with the, the sound off um, there was some audio in the background um, namely my uh, my kids running around so what I did was I literally just you click on it you separate it and then I deleted it and because of that this was pure silence um, when you're filming stuff obviously like if I was to just stay quiet now you would still get a bit of background noise when it goes from something where there is audio for example on this this particular part there'll be audio and then it goes to complete silence it seems a bit odd so with this one what I did was I just did a little voiceover because originally obviously when I have uploaded this this was meant to have audio all of this section was meant to have audio whereas now what what the uploaded video if you go and check that out um, you what you'll find is there's there's a few gaps so it might come to here and then all of a sudden there'll be uh, no sound and if you notice here what I tried to do was this whole section was filmed in one cut but what I tried to do was actually just cut out bits just to try and avoid getting that that strike the copyright strike um, but it, it still picked you up so that's obviously you live and learn as a whole relatively relatively simple um, simple cut to do right and this was the last one this was obviously very very simple um, literally just pulled the videos and just pasted them in um, and added a different soundtrack to it so that's just a little behind the scenes look in terms of um, what what goes into some of the videos that r look relatively simple but can actually be quite time consuming um, on average um, I'd say so for the videos that I filmed yesterday so, so for this one and for this one both of these were done yesterday so I filmed everything um, roughly around half one to two o'clock in the afternoon and I think it took me through till about four o'clock um, by the time I'd actually edited both of these um, exported them to my camera roll and then uploaded them to YouTube the uploading to be to be fair is the, the lengthiest process in all of this um, I did this one as well actually yeah so this was the first one that I actually filmed and then I shot the video for both of these two so those three videos um, the torrent one was obviously quite a short short clip and because there's so much um, black area in this it this took virtually no time to actually upload um, I think I exported this in lower settings as well so you can actually when you go to movie photos you can choose and as you can see here um, I, I exported this on I think it was this setting so web 12, 12 megabits per second whereas my standard is um, extreme so basically it, what I'll do is go all the way to ultra I'll have this on 265 and audio I normally kick up a bit as well so if, basically I just want to give it the best chance um, best quality to actually upload in so that's that's what I normally have it on so four gigabytes for that file um, and let's just go back to what it was so it was on 264 so this is what it was on so yeah so it, it's the difference between 496 megabytes as you can see in this bottom right hand corner compared to four gigabytes uh, the difference but obviously with this being a screen recording it wasn't really um, that necessary to actually crank up the, the quality level because it should still look look okay when when I've uploaded it but with the other ones obviously these two it was the, the lengthiest uh, process was uh, literally uploading exporting times um, aren't too bad with this on the 11 Pro Max I find that say for example um, in fact what, what I may do is I may do a video on the actual export time but obviously the more powerful the device the, the quicker your export time is going to be now the good thing about this software is it very rarely has any crashes or bugs um, I've had one or two issues in the past where I've tried to export um, iPad screen recordings in a different form uh, format so I've tried to export it in its original format and it, for some reason it just doesn't like that and it wants you to export it in 16 by 9 um, and have an actual aspect ratio um, that you'd normally come across on a 16 by 9 but um, other than that generally this once I've created this I hit export I know it's going to export one thing I don't really like about this since uh, some of the updates is it used to give you a little splash screen uh, when the video finished exporting whereas now what it does is um, it brings up a little box to say it's exporting so what I'll do is I'll just do a little I'll start one just so then you can see what I mean so when you go to export 
you hit this button and it starts to do this so it starts writing and what it used to do when this finished it used to bring up a little splash splash screen whereas now it just does that so it'll literally just come back to the screen so a lot of the times when i'm exporting i'll literally just leave the phone and i'll be doing something else and i'll come back to it and it'll be back on the screen and i'll, I'll have no idea how long it's been sat there for um which obviously for oled screens um obviously i've got the the oled burning um series going on but i try to be as careful with the devices as well so whilst i'm doing it i will turn the brightness all the way down while it's exporting and then when i come back to it i'll crank it back up again that's just to, to make sure that it's not sat on that one screen of the exporting bubble um, for too long but yeah so exporting times are quite good um, with this particular software and obviously the fact that you can crank it out to 97 megabits per second on h265 um, that's quite higher quality level um, and if I just come back to another point that I wanted to just show as well so on here you can actually check um, the quality level as to what it was filmed in um, if I remember probably would have been this one that I filmed in Filmic Pro so as you can see there, um, 123 megabits per second. This this was actually um, the the full mega uh, file bit rate. Sorry, I just couldn't, couldn't think of the word there. Yeah, the bit rate is 123 megabits per second that it's actually recording through Filmic Pro. Now, if I go to one that would have been filmed without, so this I believe was filmed. This I believe was filmed directly with the camera software uh, on the iPhone. So this is 90 megabits per second. So there is quite quite a bit of a difference there between what Filmic Pro is um, actually doing and compared to the built-in software. Whether that comes across or not, um, I don't know. That's That was the whole point of this, this particular video um, to try and show see if, see if it's even noticeable, see whether that extra bit rate this is your average so uh, your 46 that's what I tend to find most of the time with my videos it's it's averaging around the 40 ish mark and compare that to the Filmic Pro one 121 megabits for exactly the same scene essentially but anyway this this was um, it was meant to be a brief look obviously it's turned out to be quite a bit longer than that but what I'll do is I'll get this exported and somewhere down the line what I'll do is I'll do a video and I'll record screen record the whole thing start to finish in terms of my editing and just go through everything in terms of um, how I'm actually going about it um, one of the issues I've, I've got at the moment that I need to kind of figure out is I may need to just change up the audio because at the moment obviously I've got the microphone plugged in the one that I actually um, it was this one so the one that I actually did the unboxing for uh, not that sorry it was this and uh, by the way, this is I I, uh, I actually had a spelling mistake on that. Um, it's the the name of this microphone is actually spelled wrong. I didn't realise till afterwards. Um, but if I do a follow up, I'll I'll correct that. Um, when you've got this particular microphone plugged in, it obviously disables the speaker. Um, so I need to try and figure out what what I'll do about that with regards to making a start to finish video because. Um, I can't edit these videos without having some audio playing because that's that's where most of the the syncing and the the cuts come come in so um, I may end up for that particular one just end up either using another phone to record what I'm doing or what I might do is um, just record with the internal speakers and see how it comes across because I'm not sure how it'll work with regards to playing audio whilst also recording audio uh, through the microphones but anyway, that was today's video. Um, as always, um, please like, share, subscribe. Um, hit the bell icon for any new videos I've got. As you can see, I've got tons of videos that I've made, but I just don't want to release all of these all in one go because then basically they'll just get no views and they'll probably get buried down in, in your sub box. So um, as always, uh, thanks for watching.